The celebration for the 20th anniversary of Mafia City of Lost Heaven continues throughout social media. I want to give a huge shout out to 2K. They have been promoting the hell out of Mafia today to mark the 20 year anniversary of the launch of Mafia, the city of Lost Heaven. I did do a video about it earlier. I'll post it below in the description section, but we also have an interview to go over and a teeny tiny tease about the next Mafia game. Yes, there is a Mafia game in the works by Hangar 13. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, obviously, shout out to 2K over on Twitter for promoting hashtag Mafia20. It's amazing that there are others out there like myself that are celebrating the 20th anniversary of Mafia, the city of Lost Heaven. And they had a lot of tweets today. Throwback to the mocap from the original Mafia. So that's really cool to see. You can tell it's a, a throwback because look at this ancient PC monitor and speakers from back in the day. <laughs> So this is actually pretty cool to see this behind the scenes stuff from a long time ago. Of course, I, I don't think they, they had these back in the 1930s uh, time period, but I guess they were using it as a stand in for a Tommy gun. So, yeah, uh, be honest. What was your rage level for the race mission? Yeah, the, the freaking race mission. Yeah, mine was radioactive in case y'all were wondering. <laughs> especially for like the classic races and there's also a retweet campaign so if you retweet this and uh you uh hashtag it you know mafia 20 you will get uh, a chance to win mafia 3 original score vinyl soundtrack mafia hoodie and t-shirt as well as a mafia 3 signed character poster so i retweeted it twitter is just acting up today i did retweet it so when you need muscle who you choose i think i'd have to go with lincoln I'm going with Lincoln over Polly. Look, I like Polly, but with the way uh, Mafia City of Lost Heaven goes down, I think Lincoln Clay's way more reliable than uh, Polly. But anyways, let's see. Oh, yes. Uh, on September 1st through the 5th, you can get a free copy of the original Mafia game on Steam. So be sure to log into your Steam account from September 1st through September 5th in order to get a free copy of of Mafia City of Lost Heaven, which by the way is currently $15 US. So you're gonna save 15 bucks plus you're going to get a free game. The only downside is unfortunately the licensed music has been removed some time ago due to the licensing issues. So you won't be able to have that in the Steam or the GOG versions of Mafia, but at least you have the rest of the game to enjoy. In fact, I might even consider doing a Mafia 20 Years Later stream this weekend. Maybe we'll just stream through it from start to finish. And as 2K has already stated, work has already started on a brand new Mafia project. Before we dive into the future, please join us with a trip down memory lane in Mafia's 20 year history. Mafia 20th Anniversary Developer Interview. We look back on 20 years of the Mafia series with developers who have worked on the game since the very start. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, and talk about the small teeny tiny tees. We'll get that out of the way for those of you that are interested in that. I don't want to hold you over if that's all you're here for. So they're happy to confirm that they've started work on an all new Mafia project. While it's a few years away, they can't share anything more right now. They're really excited to keep working on this beloved franchise and entertain the players with new stories. So confirmed from 2K and Hangar 13, they are in development when it comes to the next Mafia game. Whether or not it turns out to be the uh, rumored prequel that we've talked about a few times over the past few months remains to be seen. I will link those videos below in the description section in case you're curious about what rumor mill information that we have so far. Whether or not that turns out to be true or just rumors remains to be seen. Obviously, I'm also including this article below in the description section as well. Let's raise a glass to everyone who's been part of this amazing Mafia community for over the past 20 years. As of August 2022, it's been two decades since the iconic Mafia series made its debut with Mafia the City of Lost Heaven. Once again, my Mafia 20 Years Later video, link below in the description section as well. It's been one hell of a ride from the very first Mafia to Mafia 2, Mafia 3, and the faithful ground-up remake of Mafia Definitive Edition. But it hasn't been easy, whether it has been humble beginnings or a tiny development team working on a game that initially had nothing to do with organized crime, to find just the right way to modernize and build on the vision of the game that started it all, there have been plenty of challenges along the way. Lost Evan Courier, 20 years 
of mob rule. The notorious Salary crew celebrate the anniversary of Mafia in the City of Law 7 in typical audacious fashion. Who limbs they may be, but those boys sure know how to party. <laughs> <laughs> to commemorate Mafia's 20th anniversary, 2K spoke to some longtime Hangar 13 developers. General Manager Roman, along with head of production, media director Thomas, have worked on every game in the series since starting with the original, while game director Alex Cox has been with the series since Mafia 2. I'm not going to mention their last names out of respect because I don't want to butcher their last names, but I do have a great deal of admiration for the hard work they have done throughout the Mafia franchise. What role did you have when you first started working on the Mafia series, and how has it evolved over the years since? Roman, I've been with the company, which was originally Illusion Softworks, independent game developer in the Czech Republic, since probably the summer of 97, so I've been here for 25 years this year. Originally, I joined the team as a 2D artist, learning a little bit about 3D, but I became a character artist for the original Mafia, City of Lost Heaven. When we started out the original Mafia, it was just four or five people. Eventually, we grew to 10 people. When we finished, it was a development team of around 20 to 25 people. On Mafia 2, I got a chance to step up into the role of art director that was probably the longest development we experienced around eight years we were still going to work on the console ports for the first mafia and we had a change to mafia 2's game engine midway through the development so it was a bit of a struggle mafia 3 was when we established hangar 13 in Nevada, california with a couple people from the czech republic moving to the u.s to work on it on mafia 3 i was in charge of the team in the czech republic as supporting art director mostly doing art production and outsourcing following mafia 3 i got a chance to become studio head general manager if you will which is what i'm doing now for mafia definitive edition it was too much to do both art director and general manager work at the same time so i asked our former colleague peter to join the team as the art director on mafia definitive edition that said i mostly go to keep the work on lightning and atmospheric effects to myself which i've always liked now I move over to Thomas. I started at the same time as Roman when we formed the team for the original Mafia. When we started, it was different game concept entirely for a couple months before Daniel, the writer of the original Mafia, brought up the idea of doing a gangster game. I started as a 3D artist. I was always into visual effects. I remember being inspired, motivated to study visual effects from watching movies like Terminator 2 on VHS. I was also making amateur movies with a friend of mine back then. That's how I learned to craft a camera animation. As director of photography for the original Mafia, I wanted to bring film grade cinematography to the game. I was also into new technology, so I convinced the team to purchase motion capture setup that had a magnet field base. It only covered two by two meters and could only fit one actor at a time, but it was huge for us and we got very creative. For instance, for scenes with a bunch of guys shooting at one another, we had to choreograph a whole shootout while only being able to record one actor at a time. Towards the end of the original game, I was also helping to lead the team, which led to a role as animation director on Mafia 2 and media director for Mafia 3. When Roman took over the studio here in Brono, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I'm not, I do apologize. I took the role of head production here in the Czech Republic, as well as media director for the role. For Mafia Defend Edition, I was the team directing motion capture sessions in the U.S. and directing the final edits. Now, here's a fun fact I did not know. Thomas was the model for the gun-toting gangster for the cover art of the original Mafia and silhouetted the mobster image in Mafia 2. So that's actually really, really cool. I like those Easter eggs. Alex Cox, I used to be the producer at 2K, working with the guys at Mafia 2. That was my first experience with the franchise and my first job in the production outside of QA. I spent a lot of time working on site with a team of 2K, acquired Illusion Softworks, and turned it into 2K Check. We became more closely involved with the development that we had been previously. I spent a lot of time with the team on site during the development of Mafia 2. I was as closely involved as I could be as an external producer. Then I officially joined the team as designer, towards the end of Mafia 2 and moved to the Czech Republic. I was also designer for Mafia 3, then became the game director for Mafia Definitive Edition a couple years later. I moved around a lot of the studio locations. I currently work now in the Brighton studio, and I worked with Roman and Thomas. I spent a couple years in the Prague office, so I definitely floated around. How does it feel to see the series build up by such a devoted global fandom in the years since the original game launched? It's been extremely rewarding. Earlier this year, I was able to attend the Mafia Orchestral concert performed by the Philharmonic. 
Not only did they play the music, some of which they had to recreate from scratch because the original score was lost, but they showed the respective cutscenes from the games on giant screen. When I saw the intro to the first Mafia game with all our names, I remembered the good times when I was setting up specific shots back in the day. Watching all the people in attendance enjoying it, it was so rewarding, I was so proud of our team. Especially in the Czech Republic, Mafia series is such a well-known thing. There are now multiple generations who know the Mafia series, which is awesome. As Thomas and Roman said, the National Institute of the Czech Republic and in surrounding countries as well is really interesting. I can't tell you how many times I've been here and during the taxi ride to the studio, the driver will strike up a conversation with me about Mafia and how excited they are about the fact that Mafia is a homegrown franchise from the Czech Republic. There's a lot of national pride in the franchise. Which game is near and dear to your heart? For me, it's the original Mafia. It was so enjoyable working on the Definitive Edition because it brought back so many memories from the 20 years ago, and we could only make the game even prettier, but we were also terrified because we knew we had to do it the right way, but the original Mafia will always be so tied to the beginning of my game development career and my younger days, with all the life events, struggles, and positives that have come with them. If I had to pick, it would be Mafia 2 because the game was the one where I had the biggest impact in my work on it. Being art director from the beginning to end, it was a struggle, but we made it through. I invested a lot of energy into it, so yes, for me, probably Mafia 2, although I like them all. Like Thomas with the first Mafia, so Alex Cox also is a huge fan of the original Mafia. Mafia 2 was my introduction to the Mafia franchise, and it was where I really fell in love with the series and saw the core appeal. But Mafia Definitive Edition is where I really felt the weight and responsibility because I didn't work on the original game, and I wasn't about to break the hearts of hardcore fans of the franchise. So Mafia Definitive Edition is our most recent achievement, and I'm most proud of it, but Mafia 2 will always be special to me. Which updates in Mafia Definitive Edition felt the most impactful to you. We tried to be quite responsible with where we changed or added things to the story. Usually we only added things to improve the pacing where things slowed down a little bit. Overall, I think we did a good job elevating the character Sarah, who was the only female character in the original game. Actually, she's technically not the original female character, but... Moving on. She got the short shaft in the original plot. She felt like a Thor Ray character. And I agree with that entirely. And I think they did a good job fleshing out Sarah's character in Mafia Definitive Edition. We worked quite hard on reintegrating her story with the Definitive Edition. And there are some really touching scenes between her and Tommy, which come through not just from the revised design and the writing, but also from the execution on stage to the high fidelity performances. On the original Mafia, there were plenty of technical limitations. For example, the draw distance was only a couple hundred meters, so you never got to see the grandiose of the city. With Mafia Definitive Edition, we had this amazing opportunity to enhance the vision of the first game. Suddenly, we could create scenic vistas and better express the atmosphere of the 1930s cities. And this is the more dorky thing, because Mafia Defense Edition was part of the Mafia Trilogy package. It allowed us to do this little bit of retconning, bringing the original Mafia game a bit more to the same universe as the other two titles. With collectible cigarette cards, we presented gangsters from all three games and how they would have looked in the 1930s, which I did appreciate, by the way, because it adds to the Mafia universe as a whole. Being able to flesh out the backstory, unite the lore, and bring the three titles closer together was cool. I agree. It was amazing going from only being able to capture one actor 20 years ago to now being able to capture a full stage performance, including all the details of the actors' faces, which really helped the story shine. In the first game, the player's imagination had to fill a lot of the gaps. In one scene, a mobster posing as a train attendant is waiting around the taping his fingers with boredom, except the technology limitations meant that we just had to stiffen his hand, moving slightly around. For the definitive edition, we had to... Uh, for the definitive edition, we could play of all the details, capture every bit of performances. There's an iconic scene when Tommy comes back to Sarah after a bloody shootout, and there's very little dialogue, but we understand so much of the connection between Tommy and Sarah through the detailed expressions on their faces. For those who don't know, Mafia Defend Edition has some pretty outlandish free ride unlockables, like a dog head, alien outfit for Tommy that calls back to the original game's free ride extreme mode. Did you have to fight to bring those goofier things back? We didn't have to convince anyone. Everybody wanted to do it. The original Mafia had quite a lot of Easter eggs, and the fan base really geeked out on trying to find and document them all. It became this thing of legendary lore among players, knowing every Easter egg was proof that you were a super fan of Mafia. 
In those days, when internet coverage of the video games was less sophisticated, being able to share those secrets was like a badge of honor for Mafia fans. A lot of people who worked on the first game were still at the studio and asked to bring back some of the secrets they've done originally that the community loved. So it was great to be able to include that stuff from Definitive Edition's free ride mode. It's a bit of an old school idea to put in wacky game mode, but it wouldn't have been the same game without at least a nod towards the stuff that was in the original. Over the past 20 years, what have been the biggest lessons you've learned about game development? I would say that we've learned all the time. We have every project we do, we learn new stuff because things keep developing, right? In the early days of Mafia, making game was, well, I wouldn't say easier, but it was a small team, a simpler technology, and so on. Games and technology keep developing, so it's all about constant learning. The biggest lesson came after we managed to release the original Mafia, and we thought we fully knew how to make games. We started to work on Mafia 2, and it was a huge challenge. The development was slow, and we were constantly hitting new ideas. It was a lesson for us all who thought we had learned enough just by doing the first game. That was the biggest realization, that this is never going to be easy. Another important lesson for me, get your assets running in the game as soon as possible and try to keep them there. A lot of the time, something seems to be almost done, but it really isn't. The last 10% is so difficult because when we're checking in the game, along with everything else. Early on, I had been focused on the cinematic feel and animations and the story cutscenes, but I learned over the years that the game itself is more important. We need to think about the game first, then support it with a great story. To new artists in the industry out there, you are not just a graphic artist, you are a game developer. Every discipline in development should constantly take stock of what the game is actually about. Right, an experienced developer will understand that other fields of development, like how other departments are working when they're building. One example is illustrations, as Thomas points. Early on from the first game, we were trying to employ architects who thought they would be great for making environment assets. And they are, but they had a hard time bypassing real world constraints for the sake of level design. So yeah, it's really important to accept that it's not just your discipline and your assets that make up the game. You have to understand the whole thing. Any seasoned developer will at some point come to the conclusion that one mantra to project success is keep it simple, stupid. Don't overcomplicate things. Really understand what you're good at and just do that. That's something we learned with Mafia Defense Edition. Rather than reinventing the game, rather than changing it substantially into something different, we identified what people liked about the game originally, the distinct cinematic crime fantasy. And we really, really drilled down on that and focused on the execution. How do we modernize it without changing it? How do we make it more beautiful without alternating the general atmosphere of Lost Heaven? I think it was a really good emphasis for us. And as a team, we're carrying that into future titles, understanding our core complacencies, as well as building on them to create even better games going forward. As a rapid fire closeout, can you share your personal favorite Mafia protagonist, side character, and mission? Joe from Mafia 2 might be both my favorite side character and protagonist, if you count Joe's adventure, but focusing on the protagonist, it'd probably be Tommy. I also really like the side character of Thomas Burke in Mafia 3. For missions, that's a difficult one. I think uh, the farm trip to the country for Mafia Defensive Edition has a really nice atmosphere and great gameplay elements. I was about to say the same mission, you stole mine. There are so many great crazy characters in Mafia 3. You mentioned Burke. I love Donovan too for the main protagonist. I would say it's a close tie between Tommy or Vito. For side characters, let's say Polly. I feel like he was too naive in the original Mafia, but we improved his character in Mafia Definitive Edition for sure. My favorite protagonist is Vito. He was the first hero I fell in love with. Great sidekicks of all games. I would say that Donovan from Mafia 3 is my favorite side character. There's a mission in Mafia 2 called In Love and Memory of Francesco Potenza. It's not a very gameplay heavy mission. It's just the guys driving around in a car together, super drunk, and they've been to a brothel, and they realize they've got a dead body in the trunk. Yeah, I think most of us remember that mission. Chaos ensues, but what's really beautiful about the mission is how it shows that core of fantasy with this trio of friends, where crime and real life intersect. I think that's the heart of the franchise, really. There's the family and the family. These guys are really close friends. They're blood brothers. They have to face weightier, darker subject matters in life of crime. So getting them here and drunkenly singing together as they drive back from burying a body in the forest is a really evocative scene for me. 
And obviously, we, we covered uh, the last question at the very beginning of the article because some of you probably wanted me to get straight to it. So yes, there is a new Mafia project in the works right now. It could be a Mafia prequel that I covered in a previous couple of videos, or it could be something else completely different. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I'll link the article below in the description section, as well as the Mafia prequel rumor videos and my Mafia 20 years later video as well for you to check out. Your thoughts, your views, and opinions regarding Mafia, the 20th anniversary, and what was your favorite game in the franchise as well as protagonists side characters missions as always feel free and let me know below in the comments section